in the last few years any sort of alternative asset manager has found it more challenging to raise funds as the impact of the, the sort of the GFC, the impact of um, some of the performance of some of the categories. Champ, I'm sure like a lot of domestic funds and some of the offshore funds, it's, it's harder now than it was. Albeit, and I think we saw this in our last fundraising, good funds that have delivered good returns over a long period of time continue to be sort of supported. But, you know, until the markets stabilise themselves, I think over a medium term and, and um, we get a little bit more commitment to the asset class uh, across the institutional investor um, range, uh, I think it will still maintain its challenges. There's no doubt as I look back over the three CHAMP funds that we've raised, there has been a change in that LP sort of base. Um, we've always had a good support from offshore, um, but you know now Australia plays a much smaller role in our total LP base. Um, and even on a relative basis, America plays a reduced role. We've seen good support out of um, Asia, Europe and, and the Middle East. We've seen obviously the introduction of the sovereign wealth funds in the last few years too, taking an active position in private equity and they've taken an active position sort of in champ. So there's been very much a continued in internationalisation of the fundraising process and again from our perspective we're, we feel like we've got a good spread across sort of the globe and across different forms of, of sort of uh, money managers, be they pension funds, fund of funds, sovereign wealth funds. Where the consolidation takes the form of one buying another or merging together, I'm not so sure. But I think you have seen uh, with the sort of the, the tougher fundraising conditions and, and sort of a contraction in the amount of money going to the sector, I think certain funds are finding it harder to raise money than they did previously. Or funds that are raising money might be raising funds that are only the same size or, or, or smaller than what they did previously. That will sort of remain and I think that's the way of the industry at a practical level um, sort of shaking itself out as opposed to one firm acquiring another firm. Look, there's no doubt if you look back over the last few years, I mean, there's obviously been Chinese interest in, and we saw that in, in, in uh, Bright's acquisition of our portfolio company, Manassan Foods, but I think you've seen some of the Japanese beverage companies have acquired some sort of beverage-related businesses down here in Australia from private equity. Um, you know, they seem to have interest in certain sectors more than others. I think obviously often the food side or maybe the resources side. But yeah, look, it's opening up a legitimate, a legitimate new um, sort of area of, of, of interest, which means that, you know, the divestment opportunities are, are sort of greater than what they were. I think we do genuinely look at the uh, alternatives for us as it relates to where we can exit the business or how we can exit the business, different sort of forms. But I'm not, we don't tend to target a, a view that uh, if we buy this business, that type of buyer will definitely be there in sort of five years time because the world changes. What we're most focused on is buying the right business, obviously paying the right price for it in the start, but a good business will tend to take care of itself as it relates to an exit.